So and welcome to another Mining Monday. Today I'm going to be showing you the Asus Expert Edition here, 1050 Ti. I'm going to show you the hash rate to power consumption here for mining Ether, but you can use that on other coins to work out what kind of profitability you can get. Paid about 150 UK pounds for this card. I've done a video on the Palette 1050 Ti X Storm Edition. Check out the link in the description below to get an understanding of what that can do to give you an idea of which card's going to be the best. And I'm going to do a roundup video saying which one I think is the best card between this and the other Acer card and the Palette 1050 Ti as well. This I found to be a good fill gap for any 1060s or 1070s, given the price of them on the market at the minute. I think the 1070s at the moment are 550 UK pounds and the 1060s are 320, so they're quite a bit more at the minute. If you haven't already, check out my other Mining Monday videos in the description and my Tech Tuesday where I look at game peripherals like graphics cards, uh, cases, smart clocks. Razer keyboards, peripherals, things like that. Anything to do with gaming or PCs I'm reviewing at the moment, as well as additional technology. So let's get on to it. So the basic rig here pulls in 27 watts of power with no load. As you can see here, the card has the Macron RAM. And default, with no overclock settings, it's running 12.5 hash here straight off the bat. So it's off to a good start. These are generally getting between 14 and 15 hash. That's where they should be aiming for. 14 is pretty reasonable. So let's get clocking it up, see what we can get out of it. I'm using the HS110 here to give the power readings. So at the moment on the default settings, we're in 12 and a half hash, it's pulling 92 watts of power. Let's give it the standard 400 core clock, see what power it's using, see what, make, see what hash we can get out of it. So given its base start, I expected a bit more of a jump in hash here. We've seen we've got about one hash here and it's running 96 watts of power for the 400 clock. I mean, it's still good but I expected a bit more of a jump given it was such a good start compared to the other 1050s that I've used. Let's continue the upward clocking, see where we can break it, see what we can get out of it. It's running 61 degrees, so it's a little bit warmer than some of the other cards as well, given this has got a dual fan set up. I expect it to be a little bit more efficient on cooling, but let's see how it goes. So we pushed it to 600 core clock. It's running 103 watts of power, which is quite high at the moment. For the 1050, I think, TI, it's running 65 degrees C, so it's getting quite hot. Uh, yeah, 14, 14 and a half hash here. So I've got it up to 800 here, memory core clock. It did break the first time. It's running 103 watts. So I'm not sure how stable it's going to be at this level. Pulling just over 15 hash here, and there you go, it broke again. So it looks like it won't go above 800 at the minute without failing. Let's spin down the memory clock, give it a bit of core clock, see what we can get out of it. So I brought the memory clock down to 700 just to get a baseline. It's running 100 watts here of power. So let's push the core clock up, see what we can do. Seems a little bit more stable at 700. So I pushed the core clock up to 100 here. It's running 103 watts of power. And it's pretty much the same at 14.7, maybe a little bit more hash out of it. Let's push it to 150, see what it'll do, see if it'll keel over. See if we get any more hash out of it, so we can get into that 15 range, which is where we want to be, really. So again, it's still at 14.8 hash here. It's got 150 core clock, and it's still putting 103 watts. There it is, 15, 15.04 but it's running at 69 degrees C, so it's starting to get a little bit hot, this card, compared to the other ones. Let's try and get 200 out of it. I expect it to fail here, but let's just see. Curiosity killed the cat, right? So at 200 core clock, it's still running. We're getting 14.9 out of it. 14.8, very, again, very similar hash rate. It's pulling 103 watts still. It's not doing much on the core clock here. Might get a bit more out of it. It's running at 200. So in credit here to Asus, although the memory's a little bit pants here compared to most, the core clock seems to be more clockable than some of them, so it might be better for gaming than mining this one. But something to bear in mind. Let's turn up a little bit more. See 250. And 250 broke it. Let's start the power consumption now, bringing that down. Okay, so I've dropped the core clock down to minus 400 as we've done the other cards. I've brought it down to 80% power limit here. I've locked the CPU to 85 temperature before it starts to moan. And it's pulling in 96 watts of power at the minute. Hash rate's at 14.7. So it's not bad hash rate for that power. Kind of, it's not bad. It's not, it doesn't reduce the hash rate here. So let's push it down a bit more, see what else we can get. So I brought the power down to 70. The 1050 Ti, as I've said before, will not go below 70 power limit. They're not at the 1060s, 1070s. I can go down to 50. These will only go down to 70. At this level, it's pulling 82 watts of power, and it's doing 14.3 hash. So let me show what settings I've been using here. It's been stable. So here it is. I've dropped the memory core clock. The only thing I've changed from the last setting down to 625. That's because it's a little bit more stable. 700, I did see it start to fail. Or 650, they were failing. So I put them down to 625. It's pulling 8 to 1 watts of power and it's doing 14.3 hash. So it's very similar. So I hope you like this video. Let me know in the comments what you're getting out of your cards. 
If you want to say anything else, let me know as well. And until the next video, I'll see you again. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.